Okay, hi guys. Since uh, I was noticing that some of you were having trouble with the calculations, I thought that I would make a quick video going over some of them uh, in the hopes that it will help you get this assignment done on time and in the proper manner. So here we go. I've posted a sheet under announcement. This is the sheet that it is, DNA, RNA, isolation, assignment, calculation questions. Also to help you walk through the calculations as well. So I'm going to be going over this sheet to begin with and hopefully that will be enough to get you started. So here we go. The sheet when you open up is going to look something like this. It's going to have an area for DNA and an area for RNA. The information inside is very similar. There's not much different in there. Um, it just gives you um, specific questions to walk you through the calculations you need to do for each. Um, so first of all, let's start with how many cells were you uh, starting with? That's the question that we've had the most trouble with uh, from looking at all the questions I've received by email. If you remember, um, we started out in Monday uh, and in most of our sections with 100 millimeter square plates. The only exception was my Wednesday morning class that had a six well plate instead where they used one row of cells for DNA and the second row of cells for RNA. Now when they're using a row of these three well plates, it's essentially the same as 100 millimeter square dish. Each one of the wells in there was about 35 millimeter square. So when we combine those three, you end up getting very close to 100. It's 110, 115 millimeter square. So 105 millimeter square actually. So it's pretty much the same. So you can go ahead and also use the same numbers as what are given in this uh, sheet. So this particular assignment, the first question actually tells you in a note that if you had a 100 millimeter square dish that was 100% confluent, that means the entire dish was covered in cells, it will contain approximately 7.5 times 10 to the 6 cells. Now this number is dependent upon the size of the cell and whether it was a really large cell or a small cell or a medium sized cells. Um, but I picked the number that suited the type of cells that we had. We had the MTA 468 cells, they're typical mammalian cells, not too large, not too small, a medium sized cell. And this is the number that you would expect to find in a 100% confluent culture dish. Now many of you would not have had a 100% confluent culture dish though. So let's take for the sake of argument that AI have a, you know, a particular size dish that if I had a 100% confluent dish, it would have had five you know, times 10 to the six cells, one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, however, when I look at it under the microscope before I use it, um, I find that I only have about 50% retrieval or or not retrieval, but 50% confluency. And that's why I asked all of you to do just that, to look at the microscope, to look at the cells under the microscope and note down the starting confluency. Um, so whatever that confluency was, if it was 100%, that it's the number that you had right up there. But if it was anything different than that, then you want to multiply the five, this, you know, five times 10 to the six number of cells with the proportion that you had. If I had 50% confluency, um, then I want to multiply this by 0.5. If I have 90% confluency, I want to multiply the number by 0.9. If I have 30%, I'm going to multiply by 0.3. So you get the idea. Um, make sure you write the equal sign when you're doing a, a, a formula and that's what you will do. You will say equals this number multiplied by 0.5 and you get the number. So now I have how many cells I have in the dish, but now I have to get them out. I have to retrieve them. No matter how good you are with your retrieval method, you're never gonna have 100% retrieval. You'll always have something left behind. With trypsinization, typically, depending upon how well you trypsinize your cells, you will get, you know, you can get as low as 20% retrieval or as high as 90, 95% retrieval. Let's say that after I do trypsinization, when I looked at my I looked at my cells uh, under the microscope, I find that on my dish I still have about 30% left behind. 
so i didn't wait quite long enough and i don't have full retrieval like i should have so i only have about 70 percent of my cells retrieved then i want to do a second multiplication step to now take my starting number of cells which was how many cells did i start with on my dish multiplied by the percentage of cells that i retrieved and i retrieve 70 percent so i'm going to multiply by 0.7 if you retrieved 90%, then you multiply by 0.9, just like before. And now this is my starting number of cells that I have been able to capture that I will be using for my DNA isolation, right? And that's the number that you want to think about. So this is the starting number of cells for DNA extraction, post-trypsinization. But remember, you divided the material once you started the process and collected the clear layer you actually gave half of it away to your partner group so in essence you only had access to half of these cells not the entire hundred percent of the cells and that's to figure out how many cells each group started out with you take the starting number of cells after retrieval and divide it by two so if you go back to that sheet now and you go through that, the, first, the answer to the first question is going to be this first number of cells that you start with. So this is my, you know, uh, 1.75 times 10 to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 times 10 to the 6 is my starting number of cells. That's what I'm going to write for my answer for the first one. That's going to be one of the things in my graph or in my table rather. Then for question number two, my uh, how many cells did each group start with will be that number divided by two. So it's the 875,000. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that number and that's my second column in my table that you know how many cells did my group start with and that's what it is. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and write that down. Now the third thing I want to know is what is the theoretical yield? How much DNA should I get? If I get 100% of the DNA out of these cells, what should I get? Well, typically as we talk ab talked about it in class, a typical diploid cell is going to have about six picograms of DNA inside each one of the nuclei. So you want to go ahead and take this number of cells that you are starting with and you want to multiply this by six to get the number of picograms in there. So this is going to be my 5.25 times 10 to the six um, picograms of DNA. Um, I can go ahead and I can, you know, put that number down for the answer of my third question. However, a better thing to do, since a lot of our work later on is gonna be in micrograms, would be to go ahead and convert this number to micrograms. To convert it to micrograms, you just basically need to divide it or multiply it with a conversion factor um, as with metric conversions. If you have a hard time just going straight from picogram to microgram, you can convert it first to nanogram and then do nanogram to microgram. But essentially, one microgram is equal to one times 10 to the six, negative six, you know, essentially, uh, one times 10 to the six picograms. So one, two, three, four, five, six. That is going to be your conversion factor. So this is how many picograms it's gonna be in one microgram. So I can go ahead and divide this number by one, two, three, four, five, six, the number of picograms I expect, and I get my yield of DNA. So in these number of cells, I should get 5.25 micrograms of DNA. That should be the number, uh, the amount that I get out. So you can go ahead and write that down equals 5 point, uh, I can write type 25 micrograms of DNA. This is going to be up till here. Now, after this is when you actually start to look at your own data yourself. Um, and remember, you also want to look at the data for your partner group uh, once you do your own calculations. So for that, you want to go to your sheet 
you want to go under the column that contains your data. I'm going to go to the instructor. 